Paul Schatz also joins us. He's president of Heritage Capital. Paul, is this the beginning of a, a bigger correction? Good morning. Well, first, Simon, it's certainly not the beginning of the bear market. So if you wanted to find correction as 10% or more price decline, I think this is, this is your routine, normal, healthy pullback in a bull market that should stop at or just short of 10%. I think we have higher highs ahead. Um, I do think a 10 to 20% correction is coming. I just don't think it's here. I think we're going to decline, reload the boat again, and have another rally first. You see, I think, Stuart, um, what will worry people is that it, it, it's not the same as it was, say, two months ago. Big things are changing. Market interest rates, 10-year rates are rising substantially. The Fed could begin to taper. So do you believe that this is the beginning of a bigger correction? Well, you know, what, what, what's changing is we're, you know, we're starting to uh, continue to get uh, positive data. You know, initial claims numbers are uh, best in six years, unemployment's best in four years, confidence, home builders' confidence is, uh, you know, as good as it's been since 2005, uh, yet we're, we're a month away from when the Fed meets in September. So it's giving investors the jitters. It's been a strong market with a lot of breath, and it makes sense we have some correction uh, at this point. Our expectation was we were going to have a, a good first half after a lot of uncertainty at the end of last year and then see some volatility uh, here during the next few months. We actually think it might only be a couple months of volatility and late in the year we'll be moving ahead as we see some better uh, fundamentals still and looking into, into next year. So uh, I, yeah. I think we, we have a pullback here but it's a viable one. I think we want to buy cyclicals during the pullback. You see, Paul, uh, the big question for many people is, as you take away the support from the Fed, is the economy and our earnings strong enough to support the market at these levels? Front and center, now, almost from left field, has come the retailers. Macy's, Walmart, Nordstrom, all disappointing. Can you explain what you think is going on there with those retailers and what that means for the economy and the market more broadly? So there's a lot well, there. You know, I think so. Sorry, Paul, oh. can you pull first, yeah? Sure. So, so first of all, the whole Fed taper talk, I think markets are fine if they know something's coming over a longer period of time. When oil spiked in, in 08, it went straight up. Markets couldn't, couldn't really digest it. If, with rates spiking roughly 80% from low to high in yield, the market's having a tougher time with that. If rates incrementally go up, the market will do better. I would argue that I think you've probably seen a low in rates, you know, 150 on the 10-year. And the high is probably, for this move, maybe 3%-ish, plus or minus. What the market needs is for rates to stay in a range bound, you know, maybe two or two and a quarter and three, and bounce around, let the economy and the markets digest it and accept it. So the retailers, what you're seeing in, in, in the home building stocks, consumers are just starting to pull back a little bit as perhaps their mortgage, uh, their, their mortgage refi rates are higher, perhaps some loans they have in the short term are a little bit higher. But again, if you don't have spikes from here, if the Fed's taper isn't as bad as everyone expects, then I think the markets and the economy will digest longer term. I absolutely do not think, do not think that the economy can stay where it is without the Fed's help. Hey, Stuart, I just wonder, you know, earlier in the year where the markets were on a tear, uh, we'd hear from traders or trading desks who would say, you know, we feel a little uneasy about uh, how far we've come. But all the portfolio managers kept saying, I've got too much cash, got all this pressure from clients saying, get me out of cash, uh, get me participating. Is that dynamic still going on? Or do PMs feel like they, their cash levels are now appropriate? I, I think what we saw at the beginning of the year really was uh, we had a tremendous ceiling over stocks last year. As the economy moves ahead, we're going to the elections, we're going to the fiscal, fiscal cliff. A lot of uncertainties and as we pass through that uh, some of those uncertainties passed behind us and investors felt a little more comfortable by stocks we had a nice move we part of the move we had the first half of this year was really uh, stolen from last year where it probably should have occurred because of uncertainties and uh, now we're in a, in a word position where investors I think are uh, portfolio managers are are, are better uh, invested however there is a lot of cash in the sidelines uh, in uh, in individual portfolios. The cash has not all been put to work. We've started to see a little bit of movement out of bonds and into stocks, but we think there's a lot more in this cycle, and we think this is pullback, and we think that next year we see more growth in the economy, and we'll hit some higher highs by the end of next year. We've got a, an 18 
uh, 50 to 1900 preliminary target for the end of next year for the S&P. Wow. In the meantime, guys, it's the middle of August. Have a great weekend, both of you. Stuart Freeman and Paul Schatz. Have a great weekend. Thanks. On the markets. Thank you. Still ahead, the man behind Netflix's hit House of Cards will tell us how Netflix got...